cause of the Great War of Rebellion against the United States will have to be attributed to slavery. For some years before the war began, there was a trite saying among some politicians that a state that was half slave and half free could not exist. All must be slave or all free or the state would go down. Now, I took no part myself in such a view of the case at the time, but since the war is over, reviewing the whole question, I've come to the conclusion that the saying is quite true. Slavery was an institution that required unusual guarantees for its protection in the states where it existed. In a country like ours where the larger portion of it was free territory, inhabited by an intelligent and well-to-do population, the people would naturally have but little sympathy for demands upon them for its protection. Hence, the people of the South were dependent upon keeping control of the general government in order to secure the perpetuation of their favorite institution. They were enabled to do this long after the states where slavery existed had ceased to have the controlling power. Through the assistance they received from odd men here and there throughout the northern states. They saw their power waning and this led them to encroach upon the prerogatives and independence of the North by enacting such laws as the Fugitive Slave Law. By this law, every Northern man was obliged, when properly summoned, to turn out and help apprehend the runaway slave of the Southern man. Northern marshals became slave catchers. Northern courts had to contribute to the support and protection of this particular institution. Now, this was a degradation which the North would not permit any longer than until they could get the power to expunge such laws from the statute books. Prior to these encroachments, the majority of people of the, of the North had little or no quarrel with slavery as long as they weren't forced to have it themselves. But they were not willing to play the role of police for the South in the protection of this institution. In the early days of this country, before we had railroads and telegraphs and steamboats, in a word, rapid transit of any sort, the states each were almost a separate nationality. The subject of slavery caused Little or no disturbance to the public mind. But the country grew. Rapid transit was established. And trade and commerce between the states got to be so much greater than before that the power of the national government became more felt and recognized and therefore 
had to be enlisted in the cause of this institution. It's probably well that we had the war when we did. We're better off now than we would have been without it and have made more rapid progress than we otherwise should have made. The civilized nations of Europe have been stimulated into unusual activity in commerce, trade, travel, and a thorough acquaintance among people of different nationalities has become common. Whereas before, it was but the few who ever had the opportunity to go beyond the limits of their own country or who do anything but other people. And two, our republican institutions were regarded as experiments up to the breaking of the rebellion. In monarchical Europe, generally believed that our republic was a rope of sand that would part the moment the slightest strain was brought upon it. But it has proven itself capable of dealing with one of the greatest wars ever made. And our people have shown themselves the most formidable in war of any nationality. This war was a fearful lesson and should teach us the necessity of avoiding wars in the future. <laughs>